Welcome back to the News at 10. One person has been confirmed dead in about 2,000 houses submerged by floodwaters in some parts of Kaduna State, northwest Nigeria. The flood is as a result of a heavy downpour that lasted for over 48 hours. Many roads have been blocked, making it difficult to get help and supplies to affected areas and over 30,000 displaced people. In August, about 30 houses were affected by floods in Kaduna as a result of heavy rains. The National Emergency Management Agency had given a warning to residents living in flood-prone areas that there will be a release of water from the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon, but the residents were reluctant to comply, citing lack of funds to get new homes. Water everywhere. Streets and houses almost submerged in water. This is the aftermath of the heavy rainfall in Kaduna State, northwest Nigeria. The heavy downpour, which lasted for 48 hours, forced many residents to flee their homes. We cannot even find a place. Nobody can go to the house. House is filled with water and everything that you don't even imagine is happening here. The little thing that we just saw flood all over. I just found myself in the water. And now my room is covered with water now. At Abubakar Kigo Road New Extension, everywhere is covered in water. This area is well known for its swampy topography. Those who live here are left to wade through the murky waters. The situation is worse at Rafinguza and Angwarimi. Residents have resorted to using Kenu to transport their children and some senior citizens to drier grounds. Uh, my house is flooded, seriously flooded. As you can see, I'm moving out. I've already taken my family out. Bread sellers are also seeking higher grounds. Earlier, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, had warned residents living in flood-prone areas to vacate such areas. Waters are released from the Lagdo Dam in Cameroon. But some residents did not heed this warning. They said they did not have any alternative option. Vehicles and motorcycles have to swim through the road in Bandawa area to get residents and their properties out. The State Emergency Management Agency, Katsema, has confirmed flooding in at least 10 local government areas. The executive secretary says they have commenced rescue operations in the affected areas. We advise them to go to nearby old friends or neighbors to get, the government is working out something. Just as I honestly said, a committee has been set up in order to have a lasting solution to these problems. We don't intend to be managing disaster, flooding, all this while. Because if you look at this, people, these people that are affected, we are the people affected in the past five years. This is not the first time these areas have been flooded. In August, over 30 houses were taken over by the flood. What a situation there. Well, now let's move from there to business. And Anne Wawudu joins us shortly. You first. First Bank. Hello, welcome to Business News. As Nigeria's central bank begins its two-day monetary policy committee meeting, analysts expect the deliberations to be dominated by weak domestic growth, the creeping inflation and exchange rate uncertainties. In line with this, the CEO of Lagos-based RTC Advisory Services, Mr. Okweyemi Agbaje, expects the committee to review downwards the key monetary rate and the cash reserve ratio. Monetary Policy Committee should be moving towards some easing. Um, I expect them to reduce the cash reserve requirement. The logic for 31%, I doubt if it still holds, given that the 31% and the high cash reserve requirements were meant to penalize the banks in a way for the liquidity we got from government deposits. Now, you've sucked out that liquidity, so and we need we have recessionary conditions. We need a financial stimulus. Um, the bailout was some form of stimulus, 
but it doesn't seem yet to have had the kind of effect I was hoping it would have. Perhaps it's not large enough. So we need some financial sector easing, it's clear. Um, so I, I, I suspect that the Monetary Policy Committee will agree with that. But to the extent that of policy, CBN has by and large exhausted its own scope for, for policy actions beyond the CRR and all of that. So the theater of action has to be on the fiscal and economic policy side. And so if there was one thing the MPC could do, <laughs> which unfortunately they don't have the power to do, it would be to compel the presidency to appoint an economic team. Nigeria's former Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, Dr. Okonjo Iweala, has been offered two key international positions. The first is to serve as chair of the 28-member board of the Global Alliance for Vaccines and Immunization, otherwise known as GAVI. While at Lazard Global Investment Firm, she will serve as a senior advisor. Dr. Konjo Iweala, who has accepted both offers, will oversee GAVI's $12 billion multilateral partnership and the disbursement of $1.8 billion immunization fund to developing countries. Also at Lazard, she's expected to work alongside former ministers from Australia, Spain, Chile and Britain on sovereign advisory. Well, the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange witnessed a slide on the first trading day of the week as the All Share Index closed at 30,265.90. Here's Harriet Agwini with the rest of the day's closing figures. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Key indicators for the first trading session of the week closed south on profit taking and lackluster attitude from investors who have their eye on a two-day crucial central bank MPC meeting. The All Share Index dipped by 0.22% to end the session at 30,265.90 with a market capitalization of 10.40 trillion naira. 27 equities suffered price losses led by UACN. The equity shed 3.65% to end the session at 30 naira 66 cobble. It's followed by flour mills of Nigeria with a 4.57% drop. On the other hand, Seplat Petroleum Development Company left the gainers advancing 1.25% to close at 243 naira. Nigerian Brewery is appreciated by 0.29% to 136 naira 40 kobo, while E Transact grew by 9.88% to 2 naira 67 kobo. The most actively traded stocks were Universal Insurance, UBA, and Access Bank. Investors in 3,157 deals exchanged over 175.56 million shares for 1.55 billion naira. And that's it on the Stock Market Report. I'm Harriet Agbingi. Well, thanks a lot, Harriet. The need for strategic management of talents in the Nigerian petroleum industry is now on the rise. This formed the focal point of discussions at the 11th Industry Symposium of the Center for Petroleum Information. At the event, the Nigerian liquefied natural gas model of talents management was recommended as the st strategy to sustaining trained personnel in the industry. Channel's business correspondent Temple Ashadu reports. It's a forum for human resources managers of oil and gas companies. They are here with deep interest on the underutilization of trained talents by multinationals in the petroleum industry. The situation is even worse in the refining and petrochemical subsectors, where for over 25 years the talents nurtured in the 1970s, 80s, and early 90s have been underutilized. NLNG's Human Resources General Manager, Mr. Peter Ujoji, is a major speaker at this event. He attributes the talents underutilization demand to the oversupply in the global crude oil markets. There are changing markets. United States used to be a net importer of crude, but for today, the market has changed or sooner or later they become net exporter of crude. We've had instances even where our country are crude, 
we couldn't get market for our crude. The NLNG manages its talents through updates and skills gaps, viable compensation philosophy, and a transparent performance management. All these and more helps the firm to secure local content. The brain power of our talents are constantly being challenged in our organizations, both at the operational level, at the service level, and also at the commercial level. So it is great working for this organization. Experts at the forum agree that the NLNG example of talent management must cut across the industry. We need to begin to look at collaboration, how we can develop people, provide them opportunities, and push away, you know, to some extent, the competitiveness. What needed to be done is the group that are retiring must be able to have a database of them that can come back to industry and act as mentors and coaches to the younger generation. So when we have an event like that, it will always find its way either in the newspapers, it find a way to the Petroleum Business Digest, which actually gets published. In recent times, NLNG has been in the forefront of talent management, investing 2 billion naira each in six universities. An approach expected to scale up science, technology, engineering and mathematics into global standards at the Nigerian institutions. Temple Ashaju, Channels Business News. It was mixed sentiments with equities around the globe today. Let's see some of those figures from major markets. Well, that's it on Business News tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Umawadu. Ijama will be back with the rest of the news at 10. You first. First Bank. Now, aviation cargo handling has been made easy for five southeast states as the Nigerian Aviation Handling Company has opened a new bonded warehouse in Enugu, southeast Nigeria. At the commissioning of the facility at the Akanu Ibiam International Airport, the chairman of NACO, Alhaji Suleiman Yaya, said that the warehouse, which is the second largest cargo terminal in the country, will handle over 100 tons of cargo per annum when fully operational. The Akanu Ibiam International Airport, Enugu, welcomed guests and dignitaries who witnessed the opening of a new customs bonded warehouse built by the Nigerian Aviation Handling Company PLC, NACO Avians. Area Controller of Customs in charge of Enugu, Anambra, and Eboin states spoke on the warehouse facility. With the dwindling revenue profile of our country as a result of the continuous downslide in all revenue, the commissioning of NACO Avian's bonded warehouse will no doubt increase the revenue profile of this area for market. Chairman of NACO, Suleiman Yahya, gave credence to the Southeast business class for supporting NACO cargo business in the country and says the warehouse facility is the second largest cargo terminal in the country. So this facility will serve all the five eastern states and help the Nigerian Customs Service optimize and increase their revenues in an efficient, transparent, and modern way. Enugu State Deputy Governor Cecilia Izelo, who graced the event, commended Narco Avians for the initiative. Just like the international flights, the facility therefore comes as a very big relief to our businessmen as it effectively brings to an end the untold hardship, toil, and expense they had to endure for decades in order to bring in their goods. And then the commissioning of the warehouse as the deputy governor cuts the tape. Please, I commission this place for the betterment of any of the states, for the betterment of Nigeria and for humanity in general. Yeah. 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 Thank you. She and other dignitaries were then taken on a tour of the facility. For the NACO Avians management, adherence to timeliness and orderliness will translate to on-time departure and on-time baggage delivery with the coming of the new customs bonded warehouse. Now the death toll from the Borono blast in Meruguri, Borono State on Sunday has risen to 54. 
The spokesperson of the command hospital, Victor Isuku, says 90 people who sustained injuries during the attack are receiving treatment in various hospitals in the capital city. Security officials at the state specialist hospital say relatives of the victims have been claiming the dead. Friends and families of missing persons have been going through debris at the scene of the blast to search for more clues. Well, still ahead on the news at 10, Australian golfer Jason Day rises to world number one in latest ranking. And that will be on sports. Stay with us.